Hi there. Today I want to talk about the role of forgetting in language learning. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a confused presentation because I haven't, all these thoughts haven't really settled in my mind. It starts with a video that I watched, a video uh, presented by Robert Bjork of UCLA, and it's entitled The Theory of Disuse and the Role of Forgetting. And I'm going to leave a link in the description. Uh, basically, he talks about, he is an expert, he has spent his life studying memory. And in fact, if you go to this video, you'll find other videos in YouTube, which are all well worth watching. And much of what he presents is counterintuitive. It's not what you would expect. Starting with this, um, uh, this, this whole issue of, of how we learn. And, and the main point is that, the, putting it very simply, the more we forget, the more we learn. And so if we learn something and then leave it, in other words, disuse, we don't worry about it for a while, we don't cram it for the exam, we learned it, we forget it. And then we relearn it later on, in other words, we retrieve it later on, that that is where learning takes place. And that if we have uh, a, a number of uh, sort of a narrow range of bits of information that we can easily retrieve, we are not in fact increasing our memory storage. We are not increasing our learning. And so that's to me is very, very important. Uh, if I relate that to my own approach to language learning, I tend not to stay with beginner texts, uh, graded readers, um, you know, 5% unknown words. I, as soon as I, with a language that's very closely related to what I know, like Ukrainian, I just go straight into the difficult material. I'm sure I could do that for Dutch. I could do it for Polish now based on my Czech and, and Ukrainian. Um, I can then go back later, and this gets back to this issue of interleaving, I can go back later and look up some points of grammar, because by that time I'll have had some exposure to the language, but I'll forget again, and I'll put it away somewhere, and when I can retrieve it, then that will all expand my learning, so that if the ultimate goal is to achieve some degree of fluency, then we are better off to learn and forget, learn and forget, look up a word, forget it, look up a word, forget it. Uh, but to deal with a lot of unknown words rather than limiting ourselves to easy material. This also relates to some of the other things that uh, Dr. Bjork mentions in some of his other videos. One is the importance of context. So if I'm working, let's say, at length, and uh, I save a blue word, make it yellow, I forget what it means, I see it in a different context two, three, five, ten days later, uh, so I'm seeing these words in different contexts. Another thing he points out is that we learn better if we learn in different contexts. So that if we are studying for a history exam and we study in the, uh, you know, in the open under a tree, and then we study in a, in a classroom and in the library, that these different contexts research shows helps us to learn. Context determines how we process information, how we code information. And so, uh, yeah, I could be looking at, on my, at it on my iPad in bed. I could be working on my computer. I could be doing other stuff. But even in terms of the, the context, the spoken, like the audio or the written context that I'm learning from, the more I'm varying the context and covering and meeting the same words, the easier it's going to be to retain. So to, to review, you know, it's better to learn and forget. Therefore, don't try to ace a narrow bit of content where you are able to retrieve it all or to study a list of words until you can retrieve it all. What you're doing is actually reducing the amount of learning, if I understand what uh, Dr. Bjork says. Whereas if you simply learn, forget, leave it out somewhere. It's now in storage. Uh, next time you need it, because you're reading, uh, it'll, if, if you're on link, you'll see it in yellow. Uh, you click on it again, you see it, run it, run up against it somewhere else. Maybe you do a bit of flashcarding and you see it there. So you're coming up against it in different contexts. 
but not necessarily with the idea of, of retaining it. In other words, we get away from the idea of tests. He does say, Robert York, that testing is good in that it forces you to try to retrieve it. But if we are reading, say at length, where you have the yellow words, every time you see a word and you don't remember what it means, you're testing yourself. So there's a built-in testing mechanism when you are reading these texts, which have all these words that you have looked up before and have already forgot forgotten. So that is, in a sense, again, testing, forcing and retrieve things that you've forgotten, and you may not, next time you come across it, you may not automatically retrieve it again, but eventually you will. So I would encourage people to go after difficult content. One other thing that he says, which is important in one of his videos, he refers to a book called The Third Source, and which basically says that traditionally the sources of education were the family context and the classroom. And now we have so many more opportunities using technology, using the internet, that this will become the sort of third source of education. And what that means is that increasingly learning will not be supervised. Learning will be independent and therefore it's very important that as learners we come up with a strategy that works. And as again Dr. Bjork points out, there are many things that about what works in terms of learning that are counterintuitive. So it's very easy if we're in an unsupervised environment to do things that are not that effective. What he does say that is a good thing is that in this third source of learning away from the classroom, uh, in fact, there is more freedom to experiment. Whereas many of these non-intuitive ways of learning, um, you know, forgetting as a means of learning, uh, these are harder to introduce in a school system where you have a curriculum, where you have testing, where you have all kinds of standards, expectations by school boards, parents, and so forth. Whereas when we get to this truly unsupervised area of learning, we can experiment, but therefore it's important to not get fooled by the sense that we're learning something when in fact we're not learning very effect effectively. And that's always my feeling, getting back to this interleaving blocked learning versus, uh, you know, uh, staggered learning, that I discovered when learning German that if I continue to try to learn the, uh, the declension tables, uh, after a while, you, you know, yeah, I'm looking at them, so I'm retrieving it more easily and more easily because it's, it's right there. I'm only focused on this, but within a few days, it's gone. Whereas if that same bit of information is saved in different contexts, say in Link, people are going to knock me for mentioning Link, but that's how I learn languages. So that's what I'm going to talk about. That seeing it then in these different contexts and forgetting it and retrieving it is probably in the long run more effective than just cramming something, uh, you know, where you eventually get to the point where you are retrieving it easily, but you're not increasing your learning. So I hope that's not too confusing. And I suggest you go and have a look at uh, Dr. Robert Bjork's videos. Thank you for listening. Bye.